Hi, I'm back, still running my, my spectrum that was supposed to only take 10 minutes. I'm still doing it. Okay, I usually don't talk this much while I'm running spectrum. But when I last left you, I was shimming, right? And again, what shimming involves is hitting one of these little buttons that controls a little portion of the magnetic field around the main magnetic field and hitting this, these buttons and trying to figure out which way the, the deuterium signal is going. And see, I just made it worse. That's the wrong one. So I go to step minus and I bring it back up and I try to get it as high as I can. It's an experimental process. It's also an iterative, iterative process. Normally people shim for a relatively long amount of time. I'm doing this very quickly. We are gonna do it very quickly. Then you would do a similar process on Z squared. Usually Z squared doesn't change too much. Now, when we're happy with the shins, we close this window, we close this window. Then we get ready to run a spectrum. To run a spectrum, you have to type GET PROSOL, get pro sol. This um, reads in some of the parameters needed. I think it reads in the um, the frequencies and so forth needed to run a proton spectrum. And again, we're not going to be studying deuterium. Deuterium is an internal monitor. We're going to be studying protons with this type of NMR. Now, when I type that, it reads the um, parameters in. Now I'm going to type R, G, A, return. Okay, R, G, A is a command that means receiver gain automatic. Right now, the instrument is running a quick experiment on the protons in the sample. It is exciting the protons. The protons are relaxing. If the sample is giving off too much signal, the instrument is automatically adjusting the receiver, which receives the signal, gain, right, that's the amplitude of the signal. It's either cutting the signal or magnifying the simple sample. And it's testing it over and over and over again until, the until it's, it has the signal at exactly the right amplitude. So gain is amplitude. Receiver gain automatic. It's doing it automatically. It's finished. It set the receiver gain. Okay? Now, this is based on your concentration. If your sample is more concentrated, the instrument has to be, the gain has to be set more sensitively. If the, if the um, sample is more dilute, I said it backwards. If the sample is more concentrated, the instrument needs to be less sensitive. The gain has to be less sensitive. If the sample is too dilute, it has to be more sensitive. So it's doing this for you automatically. It's adjusting to your sample. When the gain has been set, you're ready to run. And the way you run this spectrum is you type ZG, enter. Okay, ZG means zero the memory, Zero this memory, go. Go is telling it to do the experiment that you have typed in. And the experiment we typed in is proton. So it's running a proton spectrum on your sample. The default experiment involves running 16 scans, which you can see down here. You can see it's run one of 16 scans. Now two of 16 scans. I don't know if you can see that. But up here, you can certainly see what the spectrum looks like. The spectrum does not look like the spectra that you're going to see in class. This image that you're seeing on the screen is called a free induction decay. What you're observing is the relaxation of hydrogens that have been excited into their higher energy state and are relaxing down into their lower energy state. And that relaxation is being depicted as a collapsing sine curve. Okay? Um, over here, the, the hydrogens are extremely, are mostly excited or the excess are excited. And over here, the relaxed. Again, this is going to make more sense and we're going to discuss it more when you come in to the lab and do this. It needs to run 16 scans, and the problem is we can't read this. There's actually a signal 
for each different type of hydrogen in the molecule, and they're all laying on top of each other. So the data is all tangled up and convoluted, and we have to deconvolute it, okay? To do that, we have to do a very sophisticated mathematical op operation called a Fourier transform. And if anyone's a mathematician, I'm sure you know more about this than I do, okay? I don't know how to do a Fourier transform <laughs> on paper, okay? I don't even know if you can. But this computer can automatically do a Fourier transform on this complicated sig pile of signals. And basically what it has to do is, it, and the mathematicians in the class can, um, can elaborate on this, but what it needs to do is take each signal out. Each signal has, its, has a characteristic fre frequency. It has to take each signal out and plot it according to its frequency versus its amplitude. And so it has to create a different graph out of this data. So I'm going to do the Fourier transform. And fortunately, that's, it's a very easy command. Um, I'm just going to type EFP. And it has converted this into a spectrum. Now, it's not a very pretty looking spectrum right now because it's not phased. So I'm going to phase it by typing AP. Okay, this is a phasing routine. It's going to fix this so that all the peaks are pointing up. I feel weird describing this today because we haven't really discussed it in class yet. So I feel like I'm describing it to people who haven't learned NMR. So it's, I'm doing it a little differently. But in NMR, the peaks go up. They don't go down. Now, this spectrum is extremely small. Okay, I have to make it bigger. To make it bigger, I just click on times two a couple times. So I'm making the spectrum bigger, and you're starting to see a nice NMR spectrum here. And I'm going to expand it. To expand it, I'm going to click on the left, and then stretch out to the right with the, this is a left click on the mouse, and it'll get big enough to read, okay? Um, in the next YouTube, I will continue processing the data. So I'll see you then.